thanks for everybody for coming by and uh, spending a little time looking at this really cool, interesting new program. Um, I am going to be recording this, and I'll put it up on the site in a few days like we normally do in case you want to replay it or go back through it for any reason at all. I will also have a separate article that will appear on this program in regards to you know, some of my thoughts about uh, AI, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and uh, you know, another little video that'll go along with that, pretty much the same as we're going to do here, um, but uh, I'll also have that up. and. We have uh, a lot of other articles in the queue. I've got one on the Fuji X Pro 3, one on the Peak Tripod, one on the Colorado Tripod, one on the Tangent Wave, and we've got a few more that we're working on. Uh, biggest problem is finding enough time to write it all and take care of everything else that's going on. So uh, it's always a, a challenge kind of as a one-man show here and uh, you know, do the best we can. Kind of really enjoy what I'm doing and really appreciate all of you guys and all the other readers that are part of PhotoPXL. It's uh, great fun. Uh, we have cool programs like Luminar AI, the new Capture One, and a lot of other things happening, and some pretty cool cameras coming uh, very soon. I'm getting a few Phase One cameras in, and we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff uh, looking at the Phase One cameras. And um, it's always kind of good to go back to my roots. <clears throat> I know probably the cameras. Uh, not with an affordable reach of many people, but it does give you a, a look into different things. And what we're going to be doing is a lot of printing from those files to see how well they hold up, probably make a bunch of 44 by 72 inch prints and kind of analyze them and see how the phase one systems are going to fit in the future. Uh, also got a Hasselblad 907 coming, which is that new little um, old fashioned retro looking uh, camera from Hasselblad. So we'll be doing a little bit with that. And I'll probably go back and revisit the GFX 100, uh, amongst other things. Um, I don't ever seem to be at a lack of things to do here. So anyway, let's get rolling here. Um, we're going to talk about Luminar AI. And after I go through this little five or six slides uh, and then do a demo for you, we can open it up in a conversation. For me, the whole connotation of AI, artificial intelligence, um, uh, kind of makes me feel strange. Um, I'm the kind of guy that grew up in a dark room and learned how to do my prints. I'm also the kind of guy that grew up with Capture One and Lightroom and, you know, learned how to make my own adjustments. I'm not a big fan of presets, although this program AI is, uh, Luminar AI, is uh, changing the way I feel about that uh, very, very big time. And I think if nothing else, and no matter how you feel, you're going to find it's a very interesting program. Um, so at the end of the program, I'm going to uh, take questions. You might want to mute your microphones while uh, I'm doing this program. And I'm opening up the chat window, um, I think, uh, in a second after I get off the screen. And if you have things uh, to, to share, you want to do things, you can... Uh, put the questions in the chat box and I'll go through them as, as we move. So if everybody's ready, let's take a look at things. So uh, Luminar AI is a, a, a program by Luminar. Uh, everybody knows Luminar. It's made by a company called Skylum. Um, they're from Ukraine, I believe. And uh, they've been doing some really interesting stuff over the last few years. Um, completely different than a lot of other people are. They kind of think outside the box and that's kind of why I appreciated them. Uh, they've had Luminar 2, 3, uh, Luminar 4 is the present one, now Luminar AI, and let's not uh, forget the HDR program, because we all use HDR every day, don't we? Yeah. And they have Aurora HDR, which is a really nice uh, HDR program. The thing that I like about this, it's a new way of editing images. It's quick, easy, and it's intuitive. Where I think this program is going to do and what it's going to do for the photography field is open up image editing um, on the computer side of things for a lot of people that never have even thought about doing editing, don't want to work with a raw processor, don't understand what the sliders and everything else do. Essentially, uh, Luminar is a program where uh, you'll pick a template that's a preset, basically, and you, know, you can go through a number of them until you find the one that works, then decide the intensity of that, and then go into some other AI um, uh, applications inside. Uh, we'll talk about that. You'll see a chart on that in a second. But uh, it's it's not without its issues and it's missing a lot of things in my opinion. Um, so 
essentially one of the things that you'll find is it has a fast and large catalog. In the last few days, I've populated my catalog with nearly 18,000 images and it's fast. It, does, it hasn't broken. I haven't had any issues with the database and it scans fast. However, you can't do star ratings. Star ratings is really important in my workflow as well as I know a lot of other people, mainly because if you're using Lightroom or Capture One, you want to be able to assign uh, rating stars. And then you want to be able to sort and find images by those stars. So there's no real quick way to do that. So there's no sorting by stars and so forth. There is a sorting by uh, a like or a not like. So you can make a favorite, which is a little heart. And then you can say, show me only the hearts. Um, so that's, uh, that's there. So that's very minor sorting in that sense. So I don't really consider it sorting. There are no keywords, doesn't pick up keyword metadata. So you can't go searching for something that says uh, snow scene or uh, Antarctica or whale or anything like that. I like the keyword things with, you know, the basic keywords, but still be able to use them in my uh, searching on my other raw processors for those images. Uh, and then there's no metadata to search. I can't go in and search for images shot on the Sony a7R4 with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Now, considering that metadata is built into almost all the images, um, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Luminar add that in the future. Uh, I'm just kind of surprised it didn't show up in, in the first go round. Um, Luminar will handle RAWs, DNG, TIFFs, and JPEGs. If it doesn't handle a RAW, and so far I've thrown in Canon RAWs, Nikon RAWs, um, Sony RAWs, Fuji GFX RAWs, Fuji RAWs, as well as a ton of TIFFs and JPEGs. So um, we'll be working with a lot of those and it seems to handle those fine. The importing is very quick. And as you'll see in a minute when we go to the program, uh, it's pretty slick the way it handles and so forth. If it doesn't handle a RAW, they have a thing in their manual that tells you how you can uh, take that image and using Adobe's DNG converter, convert it to a DNG, which it then will read. Also missing is selecting images from a folder. So if I go into wanting to import a folder and it gives you the option to also import all subfolders, I would like to be able to see the folders and like click on the images I would like to bring in. Um, kind of like the importer that Capture One has and uh, Lightroom has, you can actually select the images you want. So, you know, if I did a, a 15 shot um, of a, a bird flying and I only want one picture, uh, I either have to select that one and import it individually or bring the whole folder in and then actually deselect it and then move them to a, a, out of the, the, the Luminar program after the fact. So uh, that's something that needs to be looked at. There also is no way to do virtual or duplicate images. So let's say you have a nice image of a landscape and before I edit it, I would actually like to work on the a duplicate image so that uh, I can compare it to the other image when it's done. So there is no comparison. You can't put the two pictures up on the screen at one time and compare them. And uh, there is no way to duplicate or do a virtual copy. Um, that's high on the list uh, in my research. There's a ton of people requesting it. And I talked to Skylum and they say, yep, we know it, which is not high on our list, which is kind of weird. However, there is a clever way of uh, going right to the image in the finder level and making a duplicate image. And then the catalog will actually reflect that duplicate image. I'll show you how that's done in my demo. Um, there's no print option. So you can't make prints uh, from this or you know, not a print dialog box or anything that comes up. Uh, probably the reason why it's priced at only $99. So you have to output a TIFF file or a JPEG file and take it into another program to print. Um, I take mine right into uh, Epson print layout. I'll show you how that's done also. Uh, or you can just save it to a file and, and print it through Photoshop or any number of different means like that. But there is no um, uh, print dialog box. And I'm sorry to come with you all the negatives in the beginning, but it just uh, as it'll, it'll save time as we go through things and also let you take a look at the interface a little bit better. There are no scroll bars on the thumbnail. So when you get the whole catalog and you're scrolling through it, you have no idea where you are in the scope of things in the catalog, whether you're at the top or bottom or the middle or anything like that. So you don't have that. Um, and there's no easy spotting tool. Um, you know, there is a, the typical kind of uh, content aware tool, but uh, I expected to see something a little easier for spotting. Uh, you know, they do have a clone tool um, and I mean, that works okay, but that's not the way I want to do my spotting. Uh, of course, 
some of the things I'm saying, maybe I haven't discovered them yet, but let me tell you, I've kind of been inside and outside of this program pretty heavily over the last few days, and I just don't um, uh, see them at this point. It's fun and easy to work. I will say that. And you'll see how fun and easy it is as we start playing with it in a minute. Um, they use a thing called a template, which is essentially a preset. But well, somebody went in and did, uh, it took an image or some images and uh, adjusted them and then saved it as a template. So you'll find uh, templates for all sorts of different things, such as landscape, portrait, experimental, um, aerial, and so forth. Um, it's pretty cool how the template system works and you can make your own templates and save them also. Um, but essentially when it, you click on an image, Luminar AI looks at that image and determines, is it a portrait, is it a landscape or is it something different? And then actually gives you a set of templates to get started with. However, you can select any template you want and you'll see that easy enough where it is. So it's really kind of cool. Um, and actually what's scary is in my testing here, I've done a few uh, shots where I processed them in Capture One and then um, brought them in and then I let uh, the AI do the processing and then added a few things. And um, in, in some cases, it's kind of scary that this program for $99 does a better job than an hour of image work that I did on uh, the file. Um, <laughs> In a different program. So it really is pretty slick that way. And you, you may like it and you may not. And of course, the whole thing of a machine making your choices for you uh, might be a little strange. However, you can control the choices as you'll see here in a little while. So here's the tools that are in Luminar AI. Um, body means it'll automatically uh, do artificial intelligence adjustment to body. So if you want a narrower hips or whatever, it can make you look better there. Iris opens up the eyes. There's a whole thing that detects faces and smooths them out and does all sorts of things like open eyes, change the color of the eyes. The skin tool smooths the skin. Um, you know, Boca, it's coming soon. It's not there. I've seen a demo of it. It's pretty cool. So imagine being able to take a background and uh, it detects the background and allows you to blur it. It's pretty cool. Atmosphere is a cool one. It allows you to put fog and haze in. Structure, you know what structure is, but it automatically detects structure. The sky tool is amazing. You can replace a sky instantly. And in one of the next versions, it'll also reflect that sky in any water or anything that way that you have in the image. So uh, right now it just does the sky, which is pretty cool. But imagine you've got a, you know, lakes and uh, mountains and reflecting in the lakes and you wanna change the sky and the sky automatically is changed in the lake also as part of the reflection. Uh, there's color harmony, super contrast. There's a mood, which is kind of fun. Augmented sky, which is actually different than just replacing the sky. Uh, you can put birds in, a moon in, a spaceship or whatever you want and adjust that, make it part of the image. And then uh, it also takes a look at your image and tells you how it should be cropped in composition. Um, so it's a, it's a kind of weird that way. But here, here's an example before we go into the program. This is what the interface looks like. It's pretty, pretty easy. Um, that's the Harry Potter train in Scotland. And I went in and clicked a few things and did one or two sliders. And this is what I came out with. I darkened the image. It looks like sunset. I added rays, added the sun, uh, darkened down the image and, you know, did a few things. Uh, I'm sure it's not that, uh, good of a view that you have here looking through Zoom, but it's pretty remarkable uh, and how it works. And just so we can go over the basic pricing so you know this, I don't make any money here. I'm not, well, I'm an affiliate, but the, the, the money I would make on this isn't really worth trying to push everybody to uh, order it. So you can just go right to Luminar and buy these things. Um, Luminar itself for two computers is $99 and you can add a, extra licenses if you want. And then I suggest uh, being part of the Luminar X membership. It gives you uh, assets. It gives you a bunch of different courses, um, uh, templates and fresh sky textures and 15% uh, discount, all the things in the uh, Luminar marketplace. So um, it's kind of cool to get. So let's get into this thing. Mm. How am I stopping? There we go. I hope you're, hope you're all still with me. So let's get into Luminar. 
Okay. This is Luminar. Um, if anybody has a problem with the view or something, like if I'm going cockeyed somewhere along the line um, and you're, it's not fitting your screen, um, turn your microphone on and, and give me a shout out, okay? So let's take a look at this. This is basically the interface. On the top here, I have an import button, which allows me to bring a folder of images and subfolders if you'd like. It also allows me to bring in one image to edit if that's what I want to do. And right now we're on the catalog tab. So we have 17,000 pictures here. So as you can see up here at the very top on the right, 17,778 images. And watch how fast this thing just kind of goes through its images. Yes? Uh, the uh, You have all the, uh, the, the snapshots of the attendees. They're, they're covering that, it's covering that panel. I cannot see. We're, uh, uh, we're the catalog. You're, you're not on there, see. my the way I'm doing it. Let me just, if I move this off like that, is that better? It's a little better. I can see, at least I can see the left-hand side of it. Well, how, how about that? Same thing. I mean, what, I, let me I see. I can't. I well, mean, you can, it's, turn, you can turn the thumbnail. I think look. there's a way just to kill uh, us. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm a, a, if you go up on the top and you hover your mouse over the the pictures of everybody on the top left corner, there's a, a straight line and that'll yeah, I just hit the close straight line. the window. I hit the straight line. You're still seeing images? No. The single dash. No, each person, yeah. each person needs to do it, I think. Go to view options and uh, hit uh, hide video panel. Well, I got to go back to that. Hold on a minute, please. You I think that was the right button. This is okay. What am I supposed to do? I hit view. Looks good now. It looks good now. Yeah. Okay. Let me we switch get back. Let me switch back. Hold on. Um, share screen. Moving our. Yeah, individuals can select speaker view or gallery view. How's that, guys? Good. That That's works great. too. So you can see everything now? Yep. All right, it, I'm sorry fine. about that. Huh? It's fine. The audio, at least on my screen, the audience is across the top, and uh, all your content is just underneath it. There's no conflict. All right, good. Well, you know, Kevin? I... I don't see the same thing you guys see sometimes. You know, there's all sorts of extra stuff here. Uh, Kevin? Right. Yeah? Um, I didn't hear you mention it, but is this a Lightroom plugin? Um, yeah, I believe there's a Lightroom and a Photoshop plugin, and it also plugs into um, Apple Photos. I'm going to show you at least the Apple Photos side of things um, uh, before we're done. But, yeah, I you can install it as a plugin. Um, okay, so let me show you how fast it scrolls. I'm just going to use my thumbnail, and you can see it's doing a pretty good job for 18,000 images on speed and resolution like that. So um, it, it does database management pretty well at this point with 17,000 some odd images. Now, along the right side, um, you can see favorites. So if I've selected favorites like that, you can see what the favorites are. You can see the recently added recently edited, and then the trash. And then down here we have folders, and in these folders are the places that I actually imported images from. So you can see um, the quantity <laughs> of photos in each one as we, we go through them. So, you know, here's images from an open house that I did uh, for prints. So there's 677 there. Uh, this is for an exhibit I did, there's 11 there. So you can see it's pretty cool the way the database works and populates itself and uh, works through it. So that one has 590 images in from Silo City. Now this is a good case of where I didn't wanna see all the images. Um, I would have just wanted to uh, import selected ones because you can see that there's a lot of similar ones. Um, and I wish that if nothing else, if I use the star rating, which in Lightroom and, and oh. Capture One you can do, 
uh, you, and you import from Lightroom into Capture One, uh, it'll retain the star ratings. And if I import into Luminar, I would like to have the star ratings. And then I can say, just show me all the fours or something along that line. So and that, nevertheless, uh, you can just see the performance of how things work. At the very bottom of the screen is the basic metadata you have, ISO 400, 20 millimeter, to tells you the basic camera stuff that you have and whether it's a RAW or not a RAW, um, as you can see here. And then this button here, um, this opens it up. And also when we start working on it, you'll also have uh, a, a history button. So there is a history panel to this, okay? So uh, let's go down here to demos. Uh, this uh, is pre-selected demos I, I've, I've gone ahead and looked at. And I'm gonna start showing you how some of this stuff is done, okay? So um, let's just take a look at this image here. This is a shot done in South Georgia Island a few years ago. And when I have an image up on the screen, the next thing I'm gonna do is come up here to templates. And that opens up a whole nother area over here. And it presumes based upon the looking at the image, artificial intelligence or whatever you wanna call this thing in here, looks at the image and says, it looks like a sunset. So it gives me five sunset examples. In here also, just so you know, is a whole bunch of other landscape ones. So if I just wanna see all the landscape ones, I have big city light, sunsets, overcast, and easy landscapes. I can switch over to easy landscapes, and then I can just look at each one of these things and click on them until I find one that I sort of like. And if you don't find them there, you can go back and uh, pick sunsets. And uh, there's always a black and white version in there too, and there's some pretty cool examples of black and white, but we have Dream, we have Hyperdrive, we have Impact, and we have Toscana. And we see the sky replacement there, watch. That's what I had. Toscana automatically decides that we're gonna change the sky on it. But that quickly, it does that. It's pretty, pretty freaking cool. How long does it take us in the old days to change a sky? So in any case, I think I'm gonna go with uh, this version. Down at the very bottom, I have an intensity level. So you can see I can change the intensity level and it takes a second for it to catch up because you have to actually stop. Um, so I'm gonna go with that kind of intensity at this particular point. Once you're done that, now you go into the editing area. So I hit edit and I'm given on the right hand side there, hopefully you can see it, a thing that says essentials, creative, portrait, and pro. We're gonna start off with composition. Now this is, see what this program just did? It decided that that image should be cropped to that proportion. Now you can accept it if you want, you can change the position of it if you want, but it automatically says, hey, we think this is a better shot, a better composition. So that's what it gives me. Um, I can change it, I can go back and pick any one of them. I can do it on my own. There's even one for Facebook uh, uh, free uh, feed and, and cover images, uh, but that's pretty cool. I can also, uh, flip it or turn it around. And if you're doing perspective, uh, such as a, a building, you can uh, correct distortions and different things along those lines at the same time. Okay. So let me just reset that and then just go to composition again and move that. So that's kind of the, the first step that you go through and you probably should go through in the steps that they would like. The next thing you can do is go to erase and say, for example, I want to erase something. I can select it, pick a brush and change the brush radius. Let's just get rid of this guy here because he's kind of a distraction. Get rid of that rock, get rid of that rock and get rid of that rock there. And then I just say erase and boom, just like that. So uh, that's kind of the, the way that works pretty cool. And if you want, you, you get something distracting that didn't work right, you just kind of go in and redo it till you get it where you want it. All right, so now we come down to light. Now light is typical sliders that uh, we're accustomed to working with uh, on an everyday basis. Um, I can warm it up a little bit, which I wanna do. Boom, just because I want to get that sky and you'll see how I get rid of everything else in a minute. I want to recover the highlights. So I pull that down and get a little shadows I want to open up so I can change that. 
Now, anytime along the way, I can do a before, after, or I can do a split before and after. And we'll come back to each one of those as we're finished working. I also have curves here if I want to use them, and I can also select the curves by the uh, colors. And essentially, this is sort of a levels tool at the same time. So you've got that. Now we go into the enhance. And every time you go into a program and it has artificial intelligence attached to it, you'll see an AI up here in small print. So I can change the, the accent and re redo it. And I can also enhance the sky and move it fast. Now, I also at this point can work with putting a mask on. So if I want a mask, I can select here a gradient mask and I'm gonna select gradient mask and I'm gonna pull that gradient mask down for the sky, a little bit more. And then I can change just the accent in just the sky area. And you have gradient masks available in a lot of different parts of where you're working with. So I'm gonna go in the structure. Uh, I'm gonna just boost the structure to go in the color. Um, once again, I'm gonna go into color and I'm gonna go into mask, <clears throat> go into mask, paint to mask and select gradient mask. Uh-oh, wrong way. So I'm gonna come up here like that. And now I can increase the saturation of that area or decrease it and the vibrance and remove any color cast I want. Okay. Um, also have highlight saturation and luminance or in hue saturation and luminance. So you have hue, you can fix saturation and then I can also saturate the orange or take the orange back and uh, make some adjustments along those ways in, inside that area. Okay, once again, before, after. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna do black and white because I like it the way it is, but I can convert it to black and white pretty instantly like that or convert back to color like that. And then you can base how you change the tonal values of the black and white, okay, either by luminance or saturation. So, you know, if I wanted to, I could hit the saturation, bring that back in, or just do the luminance and make those adjustments for those colors. So remember, even though it's artificial intelligence, the AI gets you to sort of where you want to be and then allows you to go further. I got details, small details, medium details, and overall sharpening. Um, you can do the detail masking if you want to protect certain areas. Uh, and you can sharpen mask at the same time and set your radius for masking. Denoise, which we're not gonna worry about here. And then landscape, I can add for the golden hour or take it back. And if there is foliage in the picture, I could add foliage. Foliage, foliage. Um, over here, moving into the next tab over here, I have sky. I can do sky selection. And if I don't like that sky, just like that, I can throw the blue sky in. Now you have to admit, this is pretty freaking cool. Um, to be able to change skies like that and do those kind of things is pretty remarkable. Uh, that you can pull it and, and, and accomplish that kind of stuff. So um, I'm just going to leave it on this guy. It's kind of fun to do. And remember, let's just take a look at before, after. And you can see there's rays coming in. I can go into advanced settings and change the atmosphere, the sky temperature, if I want to make it warmer or colder, um, sky exposure, darker, or lighter. So I've got all those. Now, augmented, augmented sky, I'm, I'm tripping over my own feet. Augmented sky allows you to pick something. So let's just throw a couple birds in the picture. And now we have a pretty cool shot that way. And of course, I can select those birds, oops, um, and make them larger or smaller, and also make a whole bunch of adjustments. Maybe I want to 
birds one. And that's a whole slock of bird, slock, whole flock of birds. I'm going to leave them in there just because it's it's kind of fun. Now I'm going to go down here to sun rays and decide if I'm going to put a sun ray. So considering the sun's coming from up here, I'm going to place the sun center. Oh, where where did my sun center go here? There we go. I'm going to move that dot up there, and then I can decide how many rays I want to have come down. An overall look. And sun rays length, I can make the length go smooth further and penetration, you know, I can take that back so it looks like it's really coming through the clouds. Um, oh, sorry, go away. Um, then I can go to drama and I can add a little more drama to the picture. I can add brightness or saturation. But now I've kind of really, really created something new. I can do different Lux, so there's a lot of Lux in here. So I can actually go to one of these and even select the effects even further. Now remember, this is all for $99. You can do all this stuff. It's pretty slick. I can do toning if I want, matte, mystical. Glow, film grain. So I've done all that side of things. We're going to get to the portrait one in a minute with portrait, but now I can come over here to uh, optics. So if I want to change and fix lens distortion, I can do that. I can de-vignette if I have a problem with my lens. I got super contrast if I want to add contrast to this image at all. <clears throat> Color harmony, dodge and burn. Um, which I could probably play a little bit with, but I'm not going to for the sake of, of timing with everybody. And then, you know, the clone stamp tool, if I want to do clone and stamping, which I don't. So we we'll just kind of get out of that one. And it seems it just decided to lose everything I did. So, oh, there it comes. Okay, so this is the first image. Um, let's look at before. Oh. Oh, I have to get out of that tool, excuse me, go up here. So that's what we started with. With the cropping and everything, that's what we ended up with. Whether you like it or not, my bottom line is it's a pretty good demonstration of what you can really do with this program. And I didn't have to do masks. I didn't have to do layers. I didn't have to do a, a lot of the things that uh, come along with a typical shot like that. Let's go to the catalog and uh, let's pick a, another image. Let's pick uh, a landscape image. And so that's one we work with a lot. Go to the tem template. Once again, it looks at the colors and automatically throws in a, a color. We can do huh, cream, hyper, wow. Impact, Toscana. I don't like any of those. So. Uh, maybe we'll just try easy landscapes. Can you switch out of the sunset collection? Because that might not be the best one. No, I'm, I already switched out of it. Now I'm in the easy landscape collection. And that one looks like it's a pretty good start. So I'm going to take that one. I'm going to reduce the intensity of it a bit. So this is called forest and stream, which is probably pretty appropriate since there's a forest. And even though you can't see it, there's a stream running back there. Uh, this is in Zion National Park. So now that I've got that done, now I come into my tools again. Uh, once again, let's just see what AI thinks uh, composition should be. So I'm going to hit the composition button. Oh, it, it really wants to crop in off to the left, which is kind of cool um, because if you look at the image, and this is what's kind of interesting here. See that diagonal tree here and this kind of junk, it doesn't like that. So it, it made the suggestion to crop like this. Um, I might, I might want to put a little more foreground in it, but you can see um, <clears throat> you can see it. I've never had a computer want to crop my images before. So it's, it's something new and different to, to work with here. Um, I don't see anything I want to erase uh, in this particular shot. So I'm going to skip through that. Let's go into the light. This is where you can adjust the color temperature. Maybe I want to make this image a little cooler. And then kind of come up to where it kind of looks nice. 
Um, maybe I want to darken it down just a bit. I want to throw smart contrast in there, cover some highlights, open some shadows. So that's where I've, I've gotten to at this point. Enhance. Um, I don't want to use mask. I'm not going to do that one. Structure. I just want to boost that a little bit. Remember, once again, let's go before and after. There's not a lot of changes so far that I've been making, as you can see. Just throwing a little more intensity into the image. Kevin, try converting that to black and white with sepia. Oh, man. OK, well, let's get down to that one in a second here. Um, I saw a hint of it before, and it looked pretty nice, actually. Yep, just give me a second. Let's just kind of finish. I want a little saturation now, a little vibrance. Any color cast? Sorry, what'd you say, honey? Now, okay. You know, I'm still I, listening to this video. I'll be off in a minute. And I can now adjust maybe a little more yellow in the trees and a little more green. This is sort of like you find in uh, Photoshop and Lightroom. Once again, this is where you can kind of start going before and after and seeing where it's at. Okay, next thing we go into black and white, um, convert to black and white. And uh, it says convert, but it doesn't really convert it to black and white. It's kind of weird. Um, Yeah, it kind of, it's interesting. It doesn't really throw the conversion into black and white all the way. So we'll come back. It could be a bug. Remember, it just got released. But I don't like either one of those. So we'll go back to the original. Details. This is where a little sharpening in a picture like this could make a, a huge difference. And, you know, we can zoom in and take a look at some of these things. You don't see any of the um, halos around any of the edges. And, of course, a, a shot like this, you could probably see it better. So uh, that's probably not helping you on uh, seeing it on the Zoom side of things. I can also go in and do detail masking and sharpening radius and all this, but uh, I don't want to do that and use up all my time. Um, Dehaze, I might throw a little golden hour in there just to warm it up a bit. And now I have foliage enhancer. So let's see what foliage enhancer does. Wow, see that glow? Woo Kevin, nice. can you take snapshots along the way and and then save that and then go on? No. However, uh, down here in the bottom right corner, I do have a history. So you can see everything I've been doing. But there is no snapshots or anything like that. Um, it would be nice to have, granted. But once again, it's a $99 program. And there's a lot of things, as you saw earlier, that really aren't still there. So you know, this is basically, I think, set up so that uh, a more basic photographer could use it, but I'm finding it's very interesting to be able to, to work with this and see um, what's, what's happening. You can sort of see the differences there. So I can turn history off, but you can go back anywhere you want in history and um, uh, see where it, where it goes. Now, there's no sky, there's no augmented sky. You might want to add a little atmosphere. So if I wanted to add a little fog, for example, I can add some fog and even change the depth of that fog. So, you know, that's kind of nice to be able to do that and turn down the lightness or whatever. No sun rays, we can go to dramatic, no mood, no toning, nothing there. Now I'm gonna go right to the pro panel and um, uh, let's see if there's anything we wanna do here. So I think I'm going to leave it right about there. Um, I might want to put a vignette in somewhere along the line. And I could go to vignette up here and kind of put that in there and change the size of it a little bit so it kind of comes in. So I think we're, we're good at that one, but I think it does pretty good. One of the things that I would like it to do, which it doesn't uh, at this time, is to be able to have a picker to select the color. Uh, like um, Capture One, for example, has a color editor and you can go with a, a, a picker and 
select the color and then make the color changes and the radius and how much you want those color changes. Um, it doesn't have it in this particular program, although I wouldn't be surprised that it does uh, think about doing something along that way somewhere in the future. Uh, once again, just kind of a before and after, probably not gonna see much of a change here, but you know, there is a change. And sometimes you don't want a huge change, you know? So let's go back to catalog. Um, I've always liked this picture. Uh, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, in the prior version of Luminar, you had the ability to work in layers. It looks like this version, the new version does not have layers. Is that correct? Yeah, don't, this is not a new version. This is a, a new program. Um, Luminar, four will still be there. So, you know, if you wanted to work in layers, you probably have to make an adjustment here and then open that image in uh, Luminar 4. I'm, I'm sure, because I've talked to these guys, I mentioned the list you saw. I said it would be nice to have layers so that I could turn on or off layers, invert layers, and do uh, color editing and, and a lot of other things along those lines. For example, I wouldn't mind being able just to select the color purple that you see in this particular image and then be able to maybe up the saturation a little bit. Uh, you know, and I, those things mean a lot to me. Um, now you can like mask in certain areas and light and darken it, but it's, it's, not, it's not intuitive like you would like to see it. Um, so there are no layers that I can find in the program at this time. You know, there's no scrolls. There's no a lot of things that you, you would expect that you would have. Um, but it's not a $400 or $300 program. It's a $99 program. And if Luminar does what they've done with all their other programs, you know, you'll turn Luminar on in the morning and all of a sudden there will be a box and saying, uh, there is an update. If you want to update it, here's the list of the new updates. Just hit, you know, click and install and it runs and install and puts new features on. So, you know, this is first generation, beginning first generation. They're going to listen to users a lot. And trust me, the beta guys, all of us, we, we've made a lot of noise so far. Um, and uh, we'll see where that all goes in the future. Um, so let's let's continue on real quick here. Let's do um, a landscape here. This is easy landscape with a clean light, sunset, long exposure. That's kind of pretty. Uh, really boosted the color. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to just take it down a little bit on intensity. I'm going to come in here to edit. I'm going to start off here with composition. I don't want to change the composition, so we're going to move right along. There's nothing I want to erase. I'm going to go right into the light mode. I want to warm it up just a bit because I like to warm it up just a bit. I'm going to try to open up the shadows on this bear a little bit. Okay, not much, but just enough. Enhance. Um, Add a little accent to it. Well, it might be a little too much. Structure. Uh, you can see it's kind of boosting it up. Remember, it, as you go, you can look at before and after. So you can see there's already a pop out difference that while I was satisfied with that originally coming out of Capture One, I now have something a lot more brilliant. Now, a lot of you guys might remember that you know, those that have been around a while joke around a lot about my images and, you know, uh, kind of coined the phrase Raberized, um, which is another company I own called Raber E-Y-E-S, Eyes, but uh, this is the kind of stuff they would expect from me. But, you know, this is very Peter Lickish, you know, contrast and pump it up and do some cool stuff with it. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, we can do the same thing in color here. If I don't like the greens, I can always tone those greens down just by sliding that down. So I can make adjustments here in the highlight saturation side of things at, at this point. Let's maybe make the, the purple flowers more purple, not that much, and throw a little magenta in. So, you know, I've made those adjustments now. Um, Detoy land, landscape, uh, don't need to do any dehaze. I do want to throw a little more warmth in there, maybe just a tad. And um, now I will go to the creative side of things. No sky, no atmosphere, no sun rays. Um, we can do a little drama, a little mood. Now, mood is kind of fun because we may find a luck here like that one. 
that actually work. So you have these LUTs, lookup tables, they are called, and essentially you can look at different films. So here's a, a, like a Kodachrome film, Red Trace, Sepia. Um, so if I went to black and white and went to Sepia, that would show up that way. Um, smoky. So you can kind of use some of these to uh, pick where you want. But, um, what did I say I liked here? Uh, Long Beach. So that's what I'm going to select. Once again, before, after, before, after. So quite a difference so far. Um, can't do anything there. We'll go into Pro, Optics, Super Contrast, Color Harmony, Color Contrast, you know, with Design, Dodge and Burn. Um, I can try some dodging and burning if you want. So I'm going to select this, make a brush size, and it's going to go darken. And I'm just going to kind of come in here and darken that top edge. It's way too much. Uh, so I'm going to take the strength down a little bit. And I'm going to do a reset. So reset, overall mount. And I'm going to try to just come in here again there. It's a little bit better this time around. Kevin, does it have a um, histogram? So you uh, can yeah, yeah, it has a histogram. It's a shitty histogram. Um, let me show histogram. See how shitty it is? Yeah, that is pretty shitty. Yeah, um, I've kind of told them that they got to do something about that. So mm -hmm. um, like I said, this is the beginning of things. It's like the histogram is one of the most valuable tools in, in working in image. Uh, why this is the histogram I have and doesn't even look accurate in my opinion. Um, there we go, there, you can switch. So that's the RGB histogram. Um, so, you know, it's it's what it is, you know? Um, <laughs> hey, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, and what's your experience if, say you've got this bear the way you want it, and then you open it back up in Capture One, is it stay true or is it, no, capture you, one can't open, you can't open the roll up. The, the roll adjustments um, don't go back to capture one. Okay, so what I do is I export and I save the disk. And I'm just going to save it to the desktop. And then normally what I put on here <clears throat> is LUM AI, which lets me know that I ran it through Luminar AI. I can select what I want here, JPEG, TIFF file, um, quality, blah, 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 same stuff that we're accustomed to. And I can save it off to the desktop. And now it's basically a TIFF and desktop. Um, you know, it's, it, it's not saving it back to RAW, so you can't go back and forth to the program. However, I was not able to accomplish this look from Capture One. This is the look I got when I printed from Capture One and I was happy with. This is the look I get here. We can debate to the cows come home, which is better and which is more subtle. You know, that one's very pastel -y. This is uh, pretty much, you know, jump out of, uh, you know, <laughs> jump out of it kind of shot. So um, essentially that's kind of how it works. And also you, I would think that you should have more places to save. I can either email the image, I can message the image, send it to Smug Mug or send it to 500 picks. Who uses those things? So in any case, um, once again, something that I, I believe they need to, to do some fixing on. So um, there you go. There's before, there's after. Um, you can say what you want. I don't really know. I'm going to have, actually, if I put this up on Facebook, people would love it because people really like that saturated bang, boom look. On, but there is something nice about that pastel -y soft look, right? There's also areas in here you can do Orton effects and all sorts of fun stuff like that. Um, let's go into a, a portrait um, here because this is where some of the stuff is. Jerry on uh, Jeremy online tonight? No. All right. Let's let's start off with this one. First off, this is um, this is the image I retouched to earlier when I was practicing today. Okay, so that's what that looks like. This is what it starts out like, and we'll try to. Regenerate it. You can see it basically looks horrible. Um, this was done by uh, Michael Durr, our video guy. He, he was nice enough to uh, give it to me as an example because I wanted to see how well it would work. So now there's a whole series of templates just for portraits. 
And we have uh, at least four in here, uh, easy portraits, which we can kind of thumb through. So I, I like the high key. So I'm gonna go with high key right now. And uh, that's where I'm gonna start from. And then I'm going to take uh, my editing and go from there. So um, composition, let's see how, what it says for composition uh, and see how you feel about it. So I'm gonna push the composition button and let's see what the program feels I should crop it to. So they think I should go long and narrow. I, I don't wanna actually go long and narrow. Um, so I'm going to position her right about here and I'm going to come in a little bit. I'm going to go to freestyle. Um, so that allows me to put a little more emphasis there and try to position her right about there. Okay. So that's my crop. I hit return. It recalculates. It does the crop. Um, light, white balance is shot, luminar default. I'm going to warm it up just a hair. I'm going to open up the exposure just a bit. You're going to see that I can do a bunch of things. I'm going to recover on the highlights. That's going to darken down a little bit on the left side. Uh, open up the shadows a hair. Enhance, I don't see a lot of things here that I'm going to change at this point. So I'm going to go right over to the portrait mode. And now we're in the portrait mode. And this is where this is where it really gets fun because this is kind of scary about um, what happens here. So kind of keep your eye on the ball here and let's see where we go. So we're going to open up the face and watch. It, I want to light the face. So it sees where the face is. And look at that. It doesn't change the rest of the image, but it opens up the exposure on her face. How many times have we screwed up when we're trying to do portraits outside without light? And now I've been able to bring her light there. So let's just take a look. That's what it was. That's what I've now changed it to. Now watch her face too. Now I have an ability to slim her face. Um, let me go in a little bit so you can see it in detail. And let me slim her face. Let's see if we can do. A before and after that's weird The before it goes all the way dark since that's where we started with but you know you, you can see as I'm going here can you all see her face getting bigger and smaller so let's just slim her face a little bit just so we can play with it that way um, now I can go into the eyes watch this the iris visibility let's open up the iris iris flare watch your eyes Enlarge the eyes. This is bizarre. Watch. Look at that. <laughs> Who would ever thought you could do that? Um, I'm not one for giant eyes, so I'm just going to kind of leave it in the middle just for the sake. I can whiten the white part of her eyes by sliding this slider. I can enhance her eyes a little bit there. If there was red eye, I could remove it. She has no dark circles and basically... Um, let's improve our eyebrows a little bit and um, let's just go into our before and after. So you can see that uh, I managed to do pretty good stuff here. Now I, I can fix her mouth too. So let's saturate her lips and let's make her lips a little more red and dark and just make her teeth go whiter. See, see her teeth? It just sees those two teeth. Can you see them getting whiter and darker? I hope you can. Hope everybody's still here. <laughs> can you all hear me? Somebody tell me that we're, everybody's still here. It's great. Okay. We're here. All right. Now let's go into skin. So she's got a pretty flawless complexion, but I can really smooth her skin out if I want. And let's remove skin defects, if that's automatic. Let's see if it takes out this, this uh, nail she put in her face. No, it doesn't. So it doesn't, but it's removed any other defects like pimples and things along that line. 
Now, I'll come to one where there's a body because what you can do with the body is actually scary. You can take a pudgy guy like me and make me look like an athlete. So um, we'll come back to that. And then high key lets us do some different things uh, as far as high key goes and so forth like that. So let's zoom back out to where we were. And um, I might want to throw some glow on her like that. And let's take a look at the before and after. So that's what we started with. That's what we came out with. I might go back to the light program and do a, a gradated mask and darken this area over here and, and do a little bit more enhancement. But since I just wanted to kind of demonstrate this part for you first, I think you can see very well that if you were a portrait photographer or you were just mom taking pictures of your kids and you can make things fixed like that, you have to admit that's pretty damn impressive. All right, um, let's turn that off. Let's go back to the catalog. I'm gonna do one more image and then um, open it up for some discussion. Um, maybe two more images. Let me see if I have a full length picture here. Here's a picture of Deborah. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get into too much trouble here. Don't tell her I, I, I showed that. Um, I'm just going to use that template and, and I'm going to go right into editing. And I want to go up here to body. And let's see if I can fix her abdomen first. Let's see if it recognizes her abdomen. Oh, look at that. Can you see that? Isn't that pretty amazing? So I, I flattened her abdomen and maybe now I'm gonna fix her shape. Oh yeah, yeah, see that? And now I can make her look like that. Well, that's a little too crazy, but isn't that kind of cool? So I've got that capability to do with full length bodies if I want um, before. That's worth price of admission alone, don't you think? <laughs> Uh, let's go back to the catalog again real quick. Let's do, uh, God, there's, these things are so much fun to play with. Um, this girl's really interesting looking. Um, so let's, let's do her. Um, let's try something really weird. Now they have these, um, experimental ones that kind of put in cool looks like that. So I, first off, I think that's kind of cool because if you're a portrait guy, you're going to be playing with that a lot. So I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to come in here to edit. I'm going to come back up here to essentials. Uh, let's see what it says to do composition wise. And uh, if, am I on freestyle? And I'm just going to go typical vertical just for the sake of uh, the demo here. Um, Lighting, I'm just gonna warm it up, even though that's cool effects in there. Um, I better reset that, come back out, hit return. Um, let's go to portrait, face, face light. I don't like what it's doing. So I'm gonna go all the way back to the template. Sorry, but I think I'm gonna just stick with um, Essence. How's that? That's a nice color, we'll stay with that. Take it down just a bit. <clears throat> I'm gonna go into Edit, Portrait, Face Light, Slim the face a little bit. You can see how it works, boom. Just a hair. Iris visibility is good. Iris flare is good. Enlarge eyes, just a hair. Ugh. Dark circles removed. Improve eyebrows. Um, let's give her green eyes. 
How's that? You can, you can change the color of the eyes. I think that's wild. Um, let's saturate her lips. Give her lip redness, lip darkening. There's no teeth. So let's take a look before. So you see all the changes? That quickly, I made a pretty good portrait. I can go in the skin. I don't know if we need to do anything more. She got a little shine. We can take the shine down. Skin defects. Um, and at this point, you know, it's pretty good. Maybe the only thing I'd like to do is come in here um, and throw a vignette. So a shoe subject right here. And, and just kind of do a little bit of a vignette. Size like that. Close it out. Oops. Uh, Kevin, I got a question. Yes. Uh, on that skin, um, there was a mount and then there was um, removed defects. I really didn't see any change when you move the amount slider, but um, I can definitely see it when you use the... Well, she's got a pretty smooth skin as it is. Um, I mean, I'll try to find a wrinkly person here in a second and uh, we'll do them. But just take a look at the before and after. How long did that take me to do? You know, a couple, you know, a minute or so. So you have to, once again, um, it's pretty neat what it does. Let's go to catalog, I'll do one or two more images. Let me find somebody with wrinkles or details. This person, um, she's got kind of a rough face. So I mean, not that it's rough because she's really a really pretty girl, but um, uh, I think I shot this on a phase one back and you know, this is the kind of stuff you get. So let's pick a template, um, go essence again. Pick one that makes her look good. It takes a minute for it to get in the focus too when you when you use them. Um, so I'll work with this particular one. It's a little warmer. I'm gonna take it down just a bit like that. Um, now, let's go right over to edit, zoom over to the portrait, go to face so I can answer your question. Um, or let's go to skin and let's kind of smooth her skins. First off, she's got a lot of shine. So I'm gonna remove some of the shine. You can see how that changes. It's kind of like a highlight filter. And then I'm gonna to try to smooth her face off a little bit more. And even more. And then hit skin defects. And now it's kind of smoothed out. Let's just see what before. So take a look at you know, some of the stuff on the forehead you can see before and after. See, look under her eyes right here. Watch what happens. So she had a lot of like wrinkles and stretch marks under her eyes and they've all now gone away. So kind of gives you a, a spot where it can be. We go back to face, try to do lip saturation, um, lip redness, lip darkening. No teeth are showing. Um, let's change your eye color if we can. Let's see how well it does. And um, yeah, what's mint? Uh, changes, let's go to see if it finds it as blue. There we go, eye whitening. So, you know, we, we've changed that a little bit like that. So you can see how that works. Skin, body, we don't have high key. So there's a, a before, that's before, that's after. Pretty cool. I kind of like it. So um, at this point, uh, because it's getting late, I won't just want to open it up to questions and answers, or if you see any of the pictures uh, on the screen here that you'd like me to run through, I'm happy to uh, do a, an enhancement on any one of these. I'm having a blast with this. I have a question. Uh, the I've used Luminar, um, and I do like their skin and the, uh, uh, I, as opposed to using uh, something else, it does a very, very nice um, and relatively quick job. Um, but um, I'd like to be able to, uh, if I had a photograph with two individuals in it, um, I'd like to be able to do them individually. And I don't think I can do that. Uh, it's a good question. You might be able to do it with masks, although the mask is pretty rudimentary at this point. So um, I think, you know, they're going to come back with, 
uh, an ability to do masks where you can do the, the settings on one person and then the, the settings on uh, another person. Um, I had a picture or two where I had several people in it and it seems to be very global at this point. Um, I think what we're going to see, because I got hints of it in my discussions with them, um, that we're going to see uh, new, new features coming fairly quickly here. Um, and and I, you know, knowing Luminar and what they've done in the past, um, I'm sure it'll do fine. It's always been confusing with Luminar and their versions. Um, some are where they had Luminar 3, and they decided, okay, that's enough. We're going to go to Luminar 4 and charge a bunch of money to go to Luminar 4. Um, so I have no idea how they're going to work all this stuff out. Um, you know, they seem to be responsive, and um, I am trying to set up a time where I can uh, interview the CEO of the company. He's certainly open to that. We're just having uh, time differences from Ukraine to here, and, um, you know, his schedule is pretty busy after the launch here, but, you know, certainly have access to him if I want. And, of course, I'd like to ask him a lot of these questions, you know, how, uh, what's the roadmap look like? You know, how do you prioritize uh, what you're going to do? Um, you know, how do you see this this moving forward? I think the question that a lot of us need to ask ourselves is how do we feel about AI? How do we feel about a machine uh, doing this kind of uh, work for us, or at least getting to the initial stage? I know, frankly, if I tried to do this in Capture One or Lightroom, uh, some of it couldn't be done, or would be on my, my capacity. Um, if we tried to do this in Photoshop, we'd have to be doing multiple layers. And how many of us are good at layers? Each layer can be probably 12 different choices is, you know, a fill layer, or this layer, or that layer, and adjustment layer, or, you know, do I make this a smart object? I mean, we could spin our heads around on our, on our necks, but I think we're seeing something for photography go in a new direction. Look for stuff. Hopefully I'll have one more one of these things before the holidays to do a little holiday cheer with all of you and um, so forth, but uh, take care, stay safe. And uh, if you like Luminar, go get it and have some fun with it. Okay. It's pretty fun.